Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick tip on tightening up torque converter bolts. Depending on the manufacturer, there may be a special way to start your bolts so that you don't have to repeat turning the engine over and over, lining everything up and torquing them down. You can actually jump straight to the first bolt, torque it down, and move over to the second one, third, fourth, and however many bolts you have, and get them all snug with just one rotation of the crankshaft. I'm going to show you something that I learned a long time ago. Now the tip that I'm going to show you in today's video certainly applies to everything Chrysler, but there's the possibility it works on other vehicles as well. And it's something that I think the manufacturers actually kind of worked into the design for installing things at the factory that save time, but yet it boils over to the technicians working on it and helping them out as well. Now before we go jumping into the tip itself on the torque converter bolts, I want to step back for a moment and kind of explain things to people that might not be seasoned mechanics, maybe some DIYers or people who are just watching to learn things about their vehicle. So what we've got right here is a 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. We've got it on the stand. And at the rear over here on another stand, we've got a 62 TE transaxle. So engine and transmission. Now there are two different connections that we make between the engine and the transaxle. The first one is the most obvious. We're going to be bolting the housing of the transaxle to the block with a series of bolts around the perimeter. At that time they become one. Now the second connection is the one that we're going to be dealing with when it comes to that quick tip. And that is the rotating parts. Now when the engine's running, that basically means that the crankshaft is spinning. Now the crankshaft is the heart of this engine. It controls the piston movement, everything as far as anything chain driven, bell operated, you name it, the crankshaft plays a major part. And the crankshaft runs the whole length of the block. It comes out the front and the rear. That's the rotating item on the block that we need to connect to the transaxle. Now it's the rotation of the crankshaft that's needed to turn the torque converter, which is what I'm pointing to right here. The torque converter actually turns the front pump. The front pump controls all the hydraulic pressure inside the transmission and operates all the clutches. And that gives you all the gears and your movement both forward and reverse. Now the item that bridges the gap between the torque converter and the crankshaft is the flex plate. Flex plates are on automatic transmissions. Manual transmissions have flywheels. Now a flex plate is nothing more than a stamped steel plate with different cutouts. We've got holes where it mounts to the crankshaft and we've got holes around the perimeter for the torque converter. One thing they all have in common is this ring around the outside with the teeth. That's what the starter meshes to to actually spin the engine when we're cranking. Now obviously with us talking about installing and tightening down the torque converter bolts, that means that they were removed previously. Now I just want to point out something real quick and that is how do you access these things. Luckily on this 3.6 liter we've got a plastic cover that we take off and we've got a good vantage point of seeing everything. Some engines you might have to remove the start or maybe there's a plate that's covering up an access hole. It might not be that easy to see. You might have to get up there with a mirror in order to see what we're talking about. Now what I want you to do is pay attention to the bolts around the perimeter. They all look to be the same. We've got some smaller ones that we're not using, but we're using these four right here. Now around the outer edge, we've got a nice circle there, another one here, another one here, and then we've got one that's different. This one right here. Now looking at it up close, you can see the obvious difference. We've got a flat area here and here, and we still got the curves at top and bottom. This is the hole that you want to start with. And there's a reason why. So let's go ahead and try to install a bolt in one of the other three holes. This is assume that this is the access location that we're going to get into. We rotate the torque converter till it lines up. And we grab our torque converter bolt and we start it a few threads. One thing you're going to notice is this. We've got a lot of movement and we're rotating. That's mainly because the hole is larger than the diameter of the threaded portion of the bowl. That's going to cause us a possible issue. Let me show you why. Let's go ahead and get started again. We'll move over to one of the other holes 
we would actually have to put the next bolt into. Now, if you went ahead and tore down the first bolt and now you're rotating the crankshaft to line up the second one, one or two things could happen. In a perfect world, the holes would line up and you could install your second bolt, torque it down with no problems. But being that the hole for the bolt to go through is so oversized, there's the possibility that when you tighten the first one, that now the second one doesn't line up. So what you'd have to do at that point is back the crankshaft back up, loosen up the first one, rotate back around, start the second one, start the third one, start the fourth one, go back around and torque all four of them. So you'll be doing that a total of eight times. You'll be actually messing with the bolts. Now, what would you do if you lined up that one special bolt hole first? So let's go ahead and do the same procedure again, but this time we're gonna start with the hole with the two flat areas. We're gonna rotate our torque converter around, line it up, and thread in our torque converter bolt. Now right off the bat, you're gonna notice an obvious difference, and that is we don't have the same amount of play that we did on the regular holes. The flat areas actually make the hole slightly smaller on the sides and actually take up all that slack. So now we can run this bolt all the way in and torque it to spec. At that point, we rotate the crankshaft to the next one lines up, install it, torque it, and repeat it until we have all the fasteners installed. So that saves us a headache of if we start with one of the other holes. We're either gonna have to install all four bolts loose and go back and tighten all four bolts, which means rotating the crankshaft twice well, we're going to go through and tighten one of them and find out that the other ones are not lining up. So whenever possible, try to find that special hole and start with it first and it's going to save you a lot of time. So for some of you, you may have already known about that special hole for lining up the torque converter bolts. But for those who didn't, hopefully you learned something new today. Now, if you like the video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you have any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video, please feel free to leave a comment below in the description or you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Also, if you like to shop on Amazon, please make sure to use the link that's in the description below this video. And any purchases that you make will help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching.